Hello, let me tell you something awesome if you want to start a podcast and you don't have the funds to do so. And if you haven't heard of Anchor by Spotify, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. And Eve has everything you need in one place. Let me explain. Anchor has tools that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Easy to use. If I can use it, anybody can use it. Also, when hosting on Anchor, you get to distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. And which is something you don't have to do nothing. Anchor does everything for you. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. Check it out right now. Start a podcast. I cannot wait to hear you speak. Hello, welcome to Truck Stop Murder and True Crime Podcast. I am your host, Gary Howard. Hopefully everybody's doing better than I am. I'm currently stuck in York, Nebraska. Yep, big storm shut me down for the, at least two days. I'm not for sure how many days yet, but hopefully I'll be out here tomorrow on my way to Loveland, Colorado. So this is a, a case that I've, I've researched before and I've done a little bit about. But let's first, before I get ahead of myself on that, let's talk about what we do here. If you're a return listener, thank you for checking me out. You know, return to my podcast. Also, if you're a new listener, let me tell you what I do. I'm a truck driver. I travel the U.S. And during this time, I have to stay at truck stops. Basically, live in parking lots, I guess. Truck stops where I do a 10-hour break. On this podcast, I'll talk about that truck stop, restaurants around it, if you're going through what was there to eat. Also, I'll talk about what people, you know, what's it like, how many trucks, parking spots, if you're a truck driver. And what people think about the reviews of the truck stop. So, if this is something you like, or if you do travel, you're like, hey, I might be going through York, you know, Nebraska here shortly on my way to wherever you might want to go. And let's see what there is there. So, I know I'm prepared if, if I'm driving a truck. So, let's talk about it. We're talking about the Saps Brothers Travel Center. It has free Wi Fi, which I have been using to research this podcast, which would have been awesome. I mean, I do have. Wi-Fi on my phone, but I like to use my computer. And I'm limited on my hotspot. Now this says it has 40 spots. Now I haven't walked around, but it don't look like it only has about 25, 30. Now it might have. There's a section over more west of here that looks like it's open up for like gravel, but I'm not for sure. I'm sure when parked there now because this place is like an icy tundra and it's full right now because of. I'm in York. Nebraska, but right there by Grand Island is where they got to shut down I-80 West. So hopefully they open up tomorrow and I'll be on my way. But this, it's in South Lincoln Avenue, exit 353. And like I said, the address of it is 3432 South Lincoln Avenue, York, Nebraska. And what you know right now, a lot of people complain on the reviews about the coffee. But you know what? I like the coffee. It was not that bad. I thought it was pretty good. But we'll get to that with the reviews. But this is one of the places a lot of people like. 135 reviews with a point, 4.0 rating. So not too bad. Diesel is currently $3.94 a gallon. Has everything a truck stop would ask for. Now I don't have cat scales, but it does have a scale. So And eat. If you want to eat, there's basically everything you can think of to eat. Inside the truck stop itself, it has a burrito restaurant. That I got a burrito breakfast bowl. It's not like a breakfast bowl this morning was real good. They made it with all the Mexican toppings, rice, and it was really good. I ate that. They also have the regular fried chicken, everything there too. So, yeah, but it says it has a subway, but I didn't see a subway there. So, there's no subway. Someone actually bitches about that. I'll get to that in the reviews. You have the Country, country Kitchen Diner right next door. You have a Dairy Queen. Then right across the street, you have a China buffet. Then right across from that, you have the Golden Gate Express. So you have a couple of Chinese options to eat if you want Chinese food. Taco John's, Burger King. Now they have Black Bart Shell, but that's a convenience store. All this is from Trucker's Path. And then you have Ruza. It's a new American hot dog place. Taco Bell, KFC, and of course right across the street there's a Walmart which I just came from 
So you could buy, unlike my last episode where I said it was the world's smallest Walmart, this is actually a regular Walmart. And by the way, I thought it was hilarious. On all the signs, there's no over, on overnight parking, but because the highway ex- interstate shut down, man, us truck drivers took over that parking lot. There's like about 25 trucks in that parking lot. And if they're not trucks in the parking lot, there's big mountains of snow. It sure snowed a lot. But here's the truck stuff. Let's talk about the truck. Like I said, it's a 4.4 4 stars out of 5 rating. People like this stuff. Place. I'm not going to go too much. A lot of them people like oh, f- f- Bebop. Let's talk. Bebop really likes to review this place a lot. I don't know who Bebop is. But first is a 4 star rating. Great location for a truck stop. Across the street, there's a Jimmy John's, Dollar Tree, AutoZone, Walmart, and a bunch of other restaurants. Inside the building... There's um bathrooms are pretty nice. Coffee is so so. See, the vehicle traffic is quite high, so make plans accordingly. Parking lot is medium sized but easy to get in and out. So, like I said, people for first complaint about the coffee and Bebop again. There's Bebop again. This truck has pretty awesome bathrooms, including paper towels, which I think is funny because a lot of people are going with the air dryers. But back to the review. This truck stop has pretty awesome bathrooms, including paper towels, has a lot of clothing and widgets you can buy. Not too much, not too many pumps there, but I didn't have to wait too long. Got the usual coffee, food and snacks, and everything looks stocked to me. Once you leave the pumps, you have to drive forward, then to the left, exit the premises. So, again, with the coffee, he didn't like the coffee, The first, who, he or her didn't like the coffee to begin with. So, let's keep on getting it. Why don't you just make your... There's, Petro right across the interstate. Go get coffee there if you don't like it here. So let's see. Downtown says no death here or Petro. Go to Shell Station. Pump one. It's just from December twenty eighth of twenty two. So, but six, at sixteen hundred. But it said the review was twenty one days ago. And this, well, I guess that's per right. The, the here's the first five star review. Really nice truck stop. Clean, nice people. Food options around it. It's willing to walk but a burrito let me start again really nice truck stop clean and nice people food options around if willing to walk but a burrito place inside might be best showers i've had at any truck stops glass shower door similar to a nice hotel 7 p.m on monday and still lots of spots left seems to never fill up unless the interstate is closed down which is filled up now five out of five stars great place which i'm going to bring this up i did shower here and the showers are nice and i was lucky enough i was trying to get to pilot and but i had to stop because i noticed there was a lot no more bash backwash on the tires you know i'm talking about if it's wet you'll see a tire spraying i didn't see that no more and then i saw a car so if you, you know hint of the day tri- you know, let me tell you something. So if you're driving and it's below freezing and you know there's conversation out and you see cars flying by you and you see water spraying off, then you know you're good. But now once that disappears, start being careful because you're probably driving on ice. So I slowed down and then a couple cars wiped up. No damage, no death, and they were able to maintain it. But then that's when I said, you know what, I'm not going to risk wiping out just so I can get a shower. I'm going to spend the 15 bucks. But when I got the shower, the nice lady there, which the staff here has been amazing, said, don't worry about it. Let me d- you gave it to me for free. So awesome. And hopefully if she listens to this, then I'm going to give you a big thank you. I wish I would have got your name. Okay, another one. Okay, here you go. An anonymous user says, two star, okay, cheap diesel, N, A, N, $20, 20 dollars nine for 10 wings. Okay. Here's the way I was talking about the subway. Anonymous, anonymous user says, ain't no subway here, kill yourself. Ain't no subway here, kill yourself. Okay, then. Shall we take this man's opinion? I don't know. Here you go, another one-star view. Need better quality help, bad attitude. That was a year ago, so maybe they took this guy's, you know, maybe they're looking at Trucker's Path. It's like, you know what, Mr. Anonymous User, who didn't want to reveal themselves to tell us our staff sucks, we're going to take your advice, we're going to fire everybody, and we're going to get new staff because you think we need better quality help. Toodles on you, good guy. Okay, 
terrible biodiesel more that's it one star review let's look for one more there was a great diner next door the kitchen of york it's closed for rona and i think it's back open now i'm not for sure but there you go there's a review of the saps brothers travel center with free wi-fi on traverse pass that i was forced to stop at because i-80 is closed but i am not disappointed in it to be honest with you like i said plenty of food they have wi-fi i always got the research now when the truck's not rolling i'm not making money but what can you do there's nothing you can do about it besides hopefully they open it up and i don't get hit by that second storm just coming through okay then let's go on to our case now i've been do i want to do one case but there was really nothing on it i might try to do that for like a bonus you know patreon episode or whatnot but there's just really nothing to it there's a family who got murdered not too far from here that that's it i just said they were murdered and unknown nobody knows there, there's another case that i want to do too that's kind of popular like this one that i've seen a lot of people do but that's more i've already started this case a while back ago watching movies and got an idea what it's about so i went with this one and what i'm talking about is charles raymond starkweather and carol and fugate if you don't know who they are you might know of uh, the movie Natural Born Killers. Hmm? Or if you listen to, I think it's um, Bruce, yeah, Bruce Springsteen, the movie, the song. Um, well, my mind went blank. <laughs> the, what state am I in? In Nebraska. It's called Nebraska. So if you know what those are, is there's a couple individuals who did a spree killing. So, yeah, Charles Raymond, Starkweather. I'm, I'm gonna, I got a lot of this information from the movie Murder in the Heartland, which is a very good movie. It was created in 1993. It has a lot of, you know, popular people of the time in it. Now, it's on YouTube. You can watch it for free. Now, you can either watch the two part or the one part. I watched the one part. I will remember to put a, a, a link in the show notes. Also, I'm going to end this podcast a little differently. There's a song. You know, there's a... A band who wrote a, a like a punk rock song about this and hopefully i'm gonna put it on out here because y'all gotta listen to this it's it's from j church it's like a punk rock band but they sung a song like a, about the whole story i'm gonna put it at the end of it if you want to listen to it hopefully i don't get in trouble i try to look them up to see ask for permission but they haven't been active on social media it looks like since 2008 i went through it so but i'm gonna put it on and see what happens it's just roll the dice and gamble I, that movie, a different, a lot of it, Wikipedia, and different, all kinds of different websites, and Find a Grave, which I'll go over all the individuals. But let's talk about, first talk about Raymond Charles Starkweather, was an American spree killer who murdered 11 people in Nebraska and Wyoming between December 1957 and January 1958 when he was 19 years old. He killed 10 of his victims between January 21st and January 29th. 1958 the date of his arrest during the spree 1958 start was accomplished by his 14 year old girlfriend Car Car carol Fay carl F ann fugate so let's talk about mr S talk about charles well where Car carol called her chuck starkweather was born in lincoln nebraska the third of seven children of guy and helen starkweather the Starkweathers were a working class family. Starkweather's family was a carpenter who was often unemployed due to rheumatoid arthritis in his hands. Helen worked as a waitress to supplement the family's income. Starkweather attended Saratoga Elementary School, Irving Junior High School, and Lincoln High School in the contrast to his family life. Starkweather later recalled nothing positive of his time at school. He was born with Genu Varum, G E N U Varum, V A R U M, a mild birth defect that causes his legs to be mishappened. Otherwise, he was bow legged. So, and was teased about this by classmates. Plus, he had a speech impediment. And plus, being 5'5, five five, so you can imagine a little 5'5 five five kid running around bow legged and, you know, stuttering. Yeah, of course they're going to make fun of him. So, as he got older and stronger, the only subject in which Starkweather excelled was Jim, where he found an outlet for his rage against those who bullied him. Starkweather then began bullying 
those who had picked on him. Eventually, he felt rage against everyone he disliked. In this period, as a young teenager, Starkweather went from being one of the most well-behaved teenagers in the community to one of the most troubled. His high school friend, Bob Bush, Bush, yeah, Bush B-U-S, it, it, I want to say Bush, but I, I, it's probably not pronounced that way, B-U-S-C-H, Bush, would later recall, he could be the kindest person you've ever seen. He'd do anything for you if he liked you. He was a hell of a lot of fun to be around, too. Everything was just one big joke to him. But he had this other side. He could be mean as hell, crew. If he saw some poor guy on the street who was bigger than he was, looked better looking or better dressed, he liked to take the poor bastard down to his size. And that's what he said about him. By the time Starkweather dropped out of school, his parents and family was actually afraid of him because he, he got so hostile and, of course, his violent outbursts at the time. So, in 1956, at the age of 18, so Starkweather was introduced to, at the time, 13-year-old Carol Ann Fugate, which is a big no in my book. I know he's under 18, but still. No, he's actually 18. That's... No, 13, she's still going through puberty. Stark was no one, this is why his parents really, her parents rejected him because of that. But it seems like they allowed it at first because Starkweather dropped out of high school in his senior year, took a job at a newspaper house, newspaper warehouse because it was near Fugate School. He began to visit her every day after school. But Starkweather taught Fugate how to drive and one day she crashed a car belonging to Starkweather's father who banished Starkweather from the family home. Starkweather quit his job and became a garbage collector. So he got kicked out of his house and was not very welcome at Fugate's house either. Starkweather began developing a nihilistic worldview which is where he just don't care, like a like a emu, like life means nothing. There's nothing, no purpose in life. There is no nothing. Believing that his current situation was the final determinant of how he would live the rest of his life, while striving only to satisfy his biological needs, bio, biological needs, and acquire power over others. Seems like I have a speech impediment sometimes. <laughs> He began plotting bank robberies and settled on a personal philosophy. Dead people are all the same level. So let's talk about little Kara Fugate, born July 30th, 1943. Fugate lived in Lincoln, Nebraska with her mother and stepfather in 1956. At age 13, she formed a relationship with Charles Fugate, like start, Charles Startweather, as I said, a high school dropout. Five years her senior, senior they met through Carl's sister Barbara, who was dating Starkweather's friend Bob Von Bush. Bob again, probably like a double date. On January twenty first, Stark. Well, I'm getting into the. Also with her, along with she lived with her half sister Betty Jean, a two year old. So I was getting ahead of myself and telling you about the murder. But yeah, well, first of all, so like I said, we're in a situation where he, she's 13 and he's 18 and her, her family, Carol's family is not happy about this at all. But he continues to go over her house and stay in relationship with her. And of course, she, she's just happy this older guy was into her and he's happy that some girl actually likes her because she was a pretty fair looking girl. So, and with him being picked on a lot with his bow leg and his speech impediment, he's like, man, I can't believe this young, beautiful girl likes me. And, of course, you heard being young seeing this. This guy really wanted to be James Dean, by the way. He had to win with the haircut and everything. Now, he was redhead, but he still idolized James, James Dean and wanted to live that lifestyle. So he wanted to get her a present one day. So on late November 30, 1957, with no money, Starkweather became angry at Robert Culvert, a new employee at the service station in Lincoln, Nebraska, who was refusing to sell him a stuffed animal on credit. He returned several times during the night to purchase small items until finally brandishing a shotgun. He forced Culvert to give him $100 from the till. He did also try to get money from the safe, but he could not get in the safe. He drove back to Culver to a remote area where he the, he tried to get the gun from from him at first. 
cover tried to, but uh, cover before be injuring for injuring cover before shooting him and killed him when he shot him several times to cover before sh I'm getting t t there goes that speech impediment that I have injuring culvert before Starkweather killed him with several shotguns and he'll get the, he's really a gun happy person he just can't shoot anybody once he usually shoots him a few times so on January 21st 1958 Starkweather went to Fugate's home Fugate's mother and stepfather Velda and Marion Bartlett keep in mind Bartlett told him to stay away he fairly shot them and then clubbed to death the two-year-old daughter Betty Jean. He hid the bodies behind the house. Well, when I say behind the house, the mother and daughter was later found in the outhouse, where Velda was actually in the outhouse. Be Betty Jean was actually in a box on top of it, and Mary and the father was in the chicken coop. Well, that's where they were in behind the house. Starkweather said that Carol was there the entire time, but she said that when she arrived home, Starkweather met her with a gun and said that her family was being held hostage. She said Starkweather told her that if she cooperated with him, her family would be safe, otherwise they would be killed. The pair remained in the house until shortly before the police alerted by few gates, suspicious grandmother arrived tw on January 27th. Now, during this time, a bunch of other people were showing up, too. Even the police showed up at one time and they tried to do a welfare check on them where the police, they left a note. She had put a note on the front door stating that everybody here has the flu, please stay away, signed Mrs. Bartlett, not Miss Betty Jean. And they said that they, she put the name of the two-year-old daughter instead of the mother, which is not right. Well, they will never catch on to that until she will later confess to why she wrote the letter with Mrs. Bartlett on it, underlined twice. She was trying to tell them something. But yeah, Starkweather later said that Carol was there the whole time. I already read that. Starkweather and Fugate drove to the farmhouse the later of August Meyer because they noticed the police was on to them. So they wanted to get out of there. And one, it was one of the family friends who lived in Barnett, Nebraska where Starkweather killed him with a shotgun blast to the head. He also killed my, the, the mayor's dog. So, this is not a good guy. Fleeing the area, the pair drove the car into a mud and abandoned the vehicle. When Robert Jensen and Carol King, two local teenagers, stopped to give them a ride, Starkweather forced them to drive back to a abandoned storm cellar in Bennett, where he shot Jensen in the back of the head. He attempted to rape King, but was unable to do so. He became angry with her and fairly shot her as well. Starkweather later admitted that shooting later admitted shooting Jensen, but claimed that Fugate shot King because she was jealous that he had sex with her, even though he did not. Fugate said that she had stayed in the car the entire time. The two fled Bennett in Jensen's car. Starkweather and Fugate drove to a wealthy section of Lincoln where they entered the home of industrialist C. Lauer Ward and his wife Clara. Starkweather stabbed their maid Ludmilla Fensel, which they called her Lillian, to death, then waited for Laur, Laur, L -A -U -E -R, Laur and Clara to return home. Starkweather killed the family dog by breaking his neck because I guess to keep him from alerting the wards. I forgot to tell you that there's puppies getting murdered in this po episode. I'll edit that in later, maybe. Clara arrived first alone and was also stabbed to death. Starkweather later admitted to having thrown a knife at Clara but insisted that Fugate had stabbed her numerous times, killing her when, Lord, when Mr. Ward returned home that evening, Starkweather shot and killed him. Starkweather and Fugate filled Ward's black 1956 Packard with stolen jewelry from the house and fled Nebraska. And, and like I said, they have, the police have already found the, the bodies of the, the, um, Carol's parents. Of the, the Carol's parents. So they, they have their, they don't know. Matter of fact, they still don't know who killed, at this point moment, they still don't know who killed the gas lieutenant. But yeah, the members of the wards and Fensel caused, Fensel caused the uproar, uproar 
with Lancaster County. Law enforcement agencies in the region sent their offices on a house-to-house -house search for the perpetrators. Governor Victor Emanuel Anderson contacted the Nebraska National Guard and the Lincoln Chief of Police called for a block-to-block -block search of that city. After several sightings of stark weather and Fugate were reported, the Lincoln Police Department was accused of incompetency for being unable to capture them. And of course, at this time, everybody's buying guns. They sold out guns everywhere. So, of course, by that time, they're already out of Lincoln, but needing a new car because Ward's Packard haven't been ad identified. A couple came upon a traveling salesman, Merle Coulson, Colson, sleeping in his Buick along the highway outside of Douglas, Wyoming. So they're pretty far away from there. After Coulson was awakened, he was fairly shot be because he did not want to open the window. He was knocked on the window, said so open the window and door, and he, wouldn't, he refused. Starkweather later accused Fugate of performing a Cope the grace after shooting him, which he just after he shot him, it's like put him out of his misery. He just hit him with the butt of his rifle. Starkweather claimed Fugate was the most sugar happy person he had ever met. Talking about him, Fugate did not ever have killed anyone. And that story, he'll go back and forth with that. The salesman's car had a parking brake. This is why I think it's funny. The sal because everybody's used to different brakes now. But the salesman's ha car had a parking brake, which was something new to Starkweather. While he attempted to drive away, the car stalled because the brake had not been released. He tried to restart the engine, and a passing motorist, geologist Joe Spinkle, stopped to help. Of course, he was a lot bigger than him, so he thought he could take out this five foot five guy. So Starkweather threatened him with the rifle at first, and the altercation ensured. At the moment, at the county sheriff's department, William Romer arrived at the scene. Fugate ran to him, yelling something in effect of, It's Starkweather, he's going to kill me. Starkweather drove off and was involved in a car chase with three officers from the county. It exceeded speeds of 100 miles an hour. I've seen some that say it's 120 miles. A bullet fired by Sheriff Earl Hefton shattered the windshield and flying glass cut Starkweather's deep, deep enough to cause bleeding, which I don't know. I've never seen how deep it was, but it was just bleeding. But he stopped, surrendered, and was captured near Douglas, Wyoming. He just They said he just stopped the car and got out and was just sitting there staring at first, and they told him to... But, you know, they stopped about 100 feet from him, told him to put his arms up. He went a couple of rounds at the ground, and he still went, and finally he listened to him and laid down on the ground. And But, yeah, the county sheriff couldn't figure out why he stopped by it, but on January 29th, that was just, just happened in Wyoming on January 29th, 1958, and he thought he was, this is why he stopped. He thought he was bleeding to death. That's why he stopped. That's the kind of yellow son of a bitch he is according to what the sheriff said but yeah so he Starkweather chose to be extradited from Wyoming to Nebraska he he and Fugate arrived there in late January 1958 he believed that either state would have executed him he was not aware however that Millard Simpson Wyoming's governor at the time opposed the death penalty Starkweather first said that he had kidnapped Fugate and she had nothing see one wait what I'm talking about, how he changed his mind. This is what he initially said, that he had kidnapped Fugate and that she had nothing to do with the murders. However, he changed his story several times. He testified against her at trial, saying that she was a willing participant. Like I said, he said that she was a gun-happy individual. Fugate was always maintained that Starkweather was holding her hostage by threatening to kill her family claiming she was unaware that they were already dead. In fact, when she got arrested, then when she was in the interrogation room, she started freaking out, saying that she wouldn't talk to her mom. She wouldn't talk to her mom, you know, acting like she did not know, which I don't know if she knew or if she didn't know. That's, you know, it, either way, I guess it depends on who you talk to. But she did have an article of the murders in her pocket, newspaper clippings of her family's murder. So she got so hostile, they actually had to sedate her. But yeah, Judge Harry A. Spencer did not believe Fugate was held hostage by Starkweather as he determined she had numerous opportunities to escape. When Starkweather was first taken in Nebraska's penitentiary after his trial, he said that he believed that he was supposed to die. He said it was 
it, if he was to be executed, then Fugue should also too. He also stated that he, they asked him, why did he do all this? He said, I always wanted, why did you kill all these people? He said, I always wanted to be a criminal, but I didn't think it was going to be this big. I don't want to be this big in, in them effects. Starkweather was convicted of the murder of Jensen, the only murder which he was tried for on May 23rd, 1958. He was sentenced to death and Starkweather was executed in the electric chair on Nebraska State Penitentiary in Lincoln, Nebraska at 12.04 a.m. on June 25th, 1959. Which I'll give his grave if you want to go pee on it or whatever you want to do. Starkweather gave no last words but later on a in a letter from prison to his parents wrote but dad i'm not real sorry for what i did because for the first time me and carol have more fun let me just read it again but dad i'm not real sorry for what i did because for the first time me and carol have more fun <laughs> that, that that statement's actually in a song that i'm gonna put at the end and hopefully don't get in trouble for he was reportedly in different about the impending death penalty had become resigned to his fate following the execution well first of all she was since she was so young they couldn't put her in the women's penitentiary at first because of her age so they put her in a mental institution where she stayed for a while and then once she in did go to the penitentiary she had to be isolated for the first year or so i think for the first year because of her age and she finally got put in population but yeah by the way, Starkweather is buried in Wakea Cemetery in Lincoln, which I'll give all the information. Fugate was also convicted as an accomplice and received a life sentence on November 21st, 1958. She, but she was paroled. Matter of fact, when she was in jail, that's one thing I like about this case. I did it because she was actually in the women's penitentiary here in York. If I said Pennsylvania any time when I was posted in Nebraska, I do apologize because there's a Saps truck stop in Pennsylvania that I stay at a lot, and I, I'm getting confused with that. So, and like I used to say before, I'm pretty limited on my time to put these podcasts out, so my editing is too little. So you get what you get. If you don't like it, I'm sorry I didn't get it. I'll do better. Just, if you want more of this and more detailed information just patreon and paypal help me out help me quit my job to do this full time but yeah she was paroled in june of 1976 after serving 17 and a half years in nebraska correctional center women penitentiary in york nebraska she is now living in hillsdale michigan is last on during the wikipedia what it has on there so yeah charles starkweather was executed in an electric chair in 1959. And Carol Ann Fugate's out there somewhere in Michigan. No, either she just got away with murder or she was his 12th you know, victim. But who are the victims is, of course, the gas station tenant, Robert Culvert, 21, Marion Bartlett, 58, her stepfather, Velda Bartlett, was her mom, Carol's mom, and her younger sister, Half sister Betty Jean Bartlett also was their family friend, August Meyer, and also the two teenage kids, Robert Jensen and Carol King, also Lillian Fensel, Clara Ward, C. Lara Ward, and finally Merle Collison. And those are the victims. So those are the 11 that Charles Starkweather. And or Carol and Fugue my Carol. If you like that, I'll try to put all the links to the Find the Graves in my description. Also, I'm going to leave you with this one song that I heard off of YouTube. Hopefully, I don't get in trouble. No copyright infringements. But you got to check this thing out. This is tell us the whole story. Also, if you want to know more about it, check out Murder in the Heartland. It's on YouTube. You can check it out and tell me how much idiot i am how much stuff i got wrong or tell me i got it right and you enjoyed it and if you did enjoy it please rate and review on anywhere you're listening to join my patreon at patreon.com forward slash truck stop murder or if you want to help me get better equipment or quit my job right now i'm really highly thinking about it being stuck here in new york nebraska as long as i did 
I'm really thinking about maybe truck stop because if the tires ain't rolling, I'm not making money. That's truckstopmurder at gmail.com on PayPal. So, without further ado, also join my Facebook group, Truck Stop Murder and True Crime Podcast. And my Twitter, you can follow me on Twitter at Truck Stop Murder and True Crime. And Twitter, no, no, that's Instagram. Twitter's a Truck Murder. Instagram at Truck Stop Murder and True Crime. Join my Facebook group at Truck Stop Murder and True Crime. Also, I have a YouTube channel that I'm trying to get up to a thousand subscribers so I can go live. And I'm kind of congested today, so if that maybe just weather got me. So if I sound a little wheezy, I do apologize right now. But all right, without further ado, let's check out. Normally, I say. You can't fix stupid, but you can numb it with a 2x4, start the engine up, and head on out of here. But I'm going to end this with this song. Sometime of anger, love, hate. The trail of Charles Star. 